there are some basic forces in development. These basic forces can be understood through the biopsychosocial framework. This framework emphasizes that there are four forces, biological, sociocultural, psychological, and life cycle forces that are mutually interactive and that development cannot be understood by examining them in isolation. By combining the four developmental forces, we have a view of human development that encompasses the lifespan, yet appreciates the unique aspects of each phase of life. Let's talk more about these four forces of development in greater detail. First are biological forces. These forces include genetic and health-related factors that affect development. Some biological forces like puberty and menopause are universal and affect people across generations, whereas others like diet or disease might affect people in specific generations or occur in a small number of people. Genetics and physiology play large roles in development, but remember, Physical characteristics are affected by environmental factors. For example, if you have a plant and you don't and you put them in water that's full of bacteria and diseases, that plant is not going to thrive. So the idea is that the environment is going to impact development. Neuroscience perspectives do support this idea, though, that underlying biological changes lead to behavioral changes throughout development. Psychological forces include all internal, perceptual, cognitive, emotional, and personality factors that affect development. For example, a more outgoing baby might elicit more smiles and attention from adults, and this would reinforce that outgoing personality. Sociocultural factors include all interpersonal, economic, societal, cultural, and ethnic factors that affect development. So this includes both culture and ethnicity. Culture would be that society's shared customs, traditions, beliefs, values, language, and products. Ethnicity are people with similar identities, race, ancestry, religion, language, or national origin. So sociocultural forces um, provide a context or backdrop for development. Think about the differences between individualistic cultures like the United States versus collectivist cultures. How might these differences affect maternity leave or support for new parents, for example? Socioeconomic status, or SES, also affects multiple factors in human development. We'll talk a lot more about this throughout the course. SES includes your economic status in a society. This includes your education level, access to resources, and level of monetary access. So these are also forces that will impact development. This is a really helpful diagram in depicting um, the different forces of human development. So here you can see this interaction between biological, social, and psychological forces on mental health. What you can see here is that biological forces such as genetic vulnerabilities, disabilities, and physical health can interact with other psychological forces like self-esteem, coping skills, and social skills um, to also impact mental health. So, so temperament and IQ would be this interaction between biological and psychological forces in impacting mental health. Similarly, there's an interaction between biological and social, social forces that impact mental health. For example, drug effects 
Same with social and psychological, family relationships and trauma. These would be il illustrative of this um, interaction between psychological and social forces. And this results um, in mental health, either positive or negative. The final force of the biopsychosocial model of health are life cycle forces. And these reflect differences in how the same event affects people of different ages. The influence of life cycle forces reflects the influence of biological, psychological, and sociocultural forces at different points in the lifespan. The same event can have different effects depending on when it happens in a person's life. So life cycle factors provide a context for understanding how people perceive their current situation and its effect on them. Um, so timing matters here. Was there a biological force that caused someone to die at age 80 or at age 10? All of these forces are going to impact the development of the individual. So, life cycle forces, historical forces, are differences in how the same event affects people of different ages. For example, the school shootings um, in Newtown, Connecticut, they're very, it's very unlikely to affect a 45-year-old the same way that it affects a six-year-old. Sometimes, life cycle forces might be more normative. Um, normative events would be age-graded influences or history-graded influences. The idea here is that there are similar experiences for people who are a particular age for age-graded influences. Most 12 to 17-year-olds around Earth experience puberty at the same time. For history-graded influences, the idea is that cultural or environmental influences that are associated with a specific time period in history are going to also influence development. For example, did you grow up during the Great Depression? Um, Sometimes these can lead to cohort effects, so please keep this term in mind as we'll talk more about it later. Finally, there might be some non-normative life events, and these are events that happen to individuals at atypical times compared to other individuals in their cohort or the same year that they were born. For example, it might be non-normative for a young child to experience the death of a parent.